as the scientists continue to improve their ability to make predictions. Programming for the Naples Marco area, this is Cablevision 9. for the Lynn Bailey Show, a weekly feature of Cablevision Channel 9. Lynn has some suggestions on places to go, things to do, and even a guest or two. And now, here's Naples' gal about town, Lynn Bailey. Hello, thank you so much for inviting us into your homes. We're delighted to be there, and we have uh, a really interesting uh, guest today. His name is Steve Brockelman, and he's from out uh, California Way and uh, he'll be telling you what he does. And to my right, making a return visit is Malin Moore. By popular and, demand. Yes, by popular demand. And we would like to uh, have John Burgess in our viewing audience pay attention to the coffee table. It no longer looks like a skating rink. We have a beautiful <laughs> and very tasteful arrangement there, a growing plant with a few little genuine plastic flowers. So <laughs> there we have it. Good morning to you, or good afternoon, or welcome aboard. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, you are visiting Malin, and you do something very interesting out in Hollywood, right? I'm California. director of promotion and advertising for Norman Lear for Tandem Productions. Uh -huh. Norman Lear, and of course, I guess he's one of, he is a household word uh, name for sure. We all know, uh, I guess the best of all would be uh, uh, All in the Family. Yes. All those other great productions. Uh -huh. Name some of your other productions. Well, we have different strokes on. Mm -hmm. uh, Tandem has done Jefferson's, mm -hmm. Good Times, One Day at a Time. Mm -hmm. Coming up this fall, we have the Baxters. Mm -hmm. uh, Norman is working with Alex Haley on a very special project called Kings of the Hill, uh -huh. which will go on the air next March on CBS. Will that be a series, or is it a four TV a very special? It's going to start as a mini series TV something? movie miniseries, uh -huh. followed by six one hours, and then becomes a regular series. Oh, that's great. And it's about two boys, a black boy and a white boy, growing up in the Depression South. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the problems that they go through in that period of time, in that part of the country, that are relevant to exactly what we're going through today. Now you told me that, uh, for instance, uh, All in the Family, uh, this was uh, just a little bit of a takeoff on uh, Norman Lear's uh, own life. Very close to Norman's life. Uh, Norman describes his childhood as uh, living in a household where everyone lived at the top of their lungs. <laughs> and uh, his father was a second generation Russian Jew, mm -hmm. very poor family mm -hmm. uh, in Connecticut. And uh, Norman's father worked in garages, sold vacuum cleaners, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, he told his wife to stifle. Oh, I like that. A very that. recognizable <laughs> word. Uh -huh, yes, I like that. And uh, he told Norman that he was the laziest white kid that he had ever met. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Norman's first job in New York was um, he had a small company selling novelty ashtrays. Oh, That's Norman Lear's beginning. The kind that say uh, souvenir of New York? That kind of thing. Uh -huh. Little oh, great. snow globes. Uh -huh. and, oh, great. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. The wonderful thing. And he moved to uh, Los Angeles and was selling uh, furniture door to door. Now, some um, uh, famous people and uh, well-known people, celebrities, uh, business and uh, in the entertainment field, are very difficult. Is Norman Lear uh, difficult? The most delightful man I have ever met. That's great. Truly. Truly considerate, kind, warm, giving. Mm -hmm. He tried to construct his company. Uh, he started the company in uh, 1959 with another producer named Bud Yorkin. They formed Tandem Productions. They called it Tandem Productions because uh, they like to think of themselves as two men riding a bicycle up a very steep hill. <laughs> it was slim in those days. Uh -huh. And uh, he's tried to build his company around uh, people that, that work together well and care for each other, and it makes it quite a nice family. What was his first big uh, hit on television? All in the Family was All truly his family. first big mm -hmm. uh, hit. He'd done about six movies, I guess, in the 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, Excuse me just a minute, uh, Steve. Uh, we'll have uh, time here for a little message from our sponsor, and then I want to know uh, not only about Norman Lear uh, some more, but also how you met Malin Moore over there. We'll be back in just a moment. 
Christiana Optical is located on 5th Avenue there at 382 5th Avenue South. During the summer months, Christiana Optical is only open five days a week, Monday through Friday, but they're there an hour and a half longer on Friday evenings until 6.30 for your convenience. Christiana Optical is owned by Richard Dick Gorkus, and he's been a registered optician for many, many years now. And his son, Rick, is there in training to become an optician, and his sister, Irma, uh, Dick's sister, Irma, is the receptionist there, and she certainly will welcome you. They're closed daily from 12 noon until 2, gives them time to have lunch and to uh, make a few phone calls and tie up a few loose ends. Christiana Optical can uh, certainly offer you ultra view lenses. Now you see your eye specialist first, then take your prescription in to Christiana Optical. And if you wear bifocals or trifocals, ask uh, about the ultra view lenses. Perhaps you've seen the double page ad for them in the leading fashion magazines. And uh, they are very fine. It's progressive power. I wear them all the time. And uh, they uh, do not have the little half moons or the line straight across to let the whole world know that you are wearing bifocal lenses. Not that the whole world will care, but I think you'll like the way you look at ultra view lenses. Then the ultra view lenses can be tinted too. The gradient tinting is uh, very effective and uh, very restful to the eyes. In fact, they do the uh, tinting in Christiana's own lab. And when it comes to sunglasses, well, you better head to Christiana Optical because you want fine uh, optical quality in your sunglasses. If you do require a prescription, they can get the prescription from the plain glasses you're wearing. Or again, see your eye specialist and take that prescription in to Christiana Optical for some really good sunglasses. And the frames are by famous designers and their quality. Christiana Optical. She's so special to me. I want to get her something really nice. But what? Where? How do you tell someone you really care about them? Let Designer's Choice help you. Fine, high-quality gifts and accents. Let yourself get lost in their beautiful wonderland of special things for special people. Lucite. Ceramic. Brass, sculpture, wall hanging, glass, many one-of-a-kind treasures. For a gift of love that will stand the test of time, please come into Designer's Choice. Trust me. She loved it, thanks to Designer's Choice. An eclectic collection of beautiful gifts at Designer's Choice. We're showing you how versatile they are there. For instance, a lucite chip and dip, a serving dish done in the handkerchief uh, manner, all sort of scalloped and beautiful. Of course, it goes with any color scheme. And uh, for your favorite physician, uh, a little uh, piece of statuary here, uh, a clown doctor with a giant type of hypodermic and a uh, little saw here, all the things uh, he needs for his profession. And to show you again how versatile designer's choice can be, a very elegant oriental type of uh, picture. And this is Lucite in here. It's a double framed picture and uh, an oriental figure. And the, it's actually not paper, but it is a fabric. So handsome, so good looking. And from designer's choice, located at Coastland. Uh, thank you, and uh, I want to know how you met uh, Malin. Malin and I met when we were about 13, 14 years old in Wichita. Mm -hmm. We were in junior high school. Yeah, went to school together. Mm -hmm. From junior high school on through high school, and uh, a little bit of college, mm -hmm. and then you left town and I left town. We both run out of town, if the truth be known. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, then you went to uh, New York, and you, uh, you have uh, been an actor in road companies and also on uh, soaps, right? On Love of Life and Edge of Night. Mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, what sort of a role did you play? Harry High School, the cleanest Harry possible kid on the block. Clean cut. As a matter of fact, that's why I was fired from Love of Life. Well, because you... In, in the context of the story, all of the children in the show, all of the, the teenagers, were getting involved in drugs mm -hmm. and, and they were stealing from their parents' medicine chests. Mm -hmm. 
And at a story conference one day, the uh, head writer, very stern woman, looked up from her script, and she looked across the room at me and pointed a bony little finger, and she said, I know why this isn't working. He's too clean. Aha! Uh -huh. so, so much for that show. So you should thank that, uh, that old mama for... Uh, so I shuffled off to Edge of Night and worked in a grocery store where everyone could be clean and... <laughs> oh, Edge of Night, you were a grocery store person? Yes. Uh-huh, I see. And then you went, uh, you had your own uh, ad agency, and it was uh, for uh, radio productions? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, any TV productions in that? No, I just did radio. Uh -huh. TV productions are hard to do. For instance, the commercials that we see and love, you know, the one with uh, the Frit or Doritas, those cost thousands of dollars to do, don't they? Oh, but hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands. Yes. Uh -huh. So that's why uh, you have to be a big company to do those, don't you? Sometimes often $250,000 is not unreasonable for a 60-second commercial. Holy socks. Mail, did you ever do any commercials? Oh, you told me. One. Yeah, we were talking Pizza about that. Hut. Yeah, it's amazing to me that uh, they can spend that much money on one commercial. But then when you figure out how much their budget is for how many times that commercial will run on the air, it's a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. It really is. So then uh, after you were uh, in soap operas, you had your company there. And then what lured you to the West Coast? I did a, did a series of radio commercials, some uh, movie trailers, for Technicolor. Mm -hmm. And they have a post-production video facility in Los Angeles called Vidtronics. They hired me in New York, moved me to Los Angeles 10 days later, just dropped everything and ran for the sunshine. And I was at Vidtronics three years as director of promotion. Then started my own advertising agency, Full Service in San Francisco. Was there two years and did some work for Tandem. You're too young to pick up a wife along the way. No wife. No wife. So it's yep. easy to go. Have suitcase, car, will travel. That's it. That's great. Now, uh, out in California, you had your own uh, agency again. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how did Norman Lear uh, uh, attract you? There are really two companies that I wanted to work for desperately. One was Norman Lear, and the other was Mary Tyler Moore. Mm -hmm. I think they're the finest independent production companies in the country. If you had gone out to apply to them in uh, any way, uh, could you have been successful, do you think? I think it took the transition of going from Vitronics, which was strictly a post-production facility, uh, to advertising so that I could sell myself back to the Los Angeles market as I would sell another product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the plan, and it seemed to work. So uh, now exactly what do you do for Norman Lear? Well, I write uh, radio spots for our shows, cut the video spots, edit them, do voiceover, uh, design press kits, and our trade advertising. We, I started an in-house agency for Tandem about uh, nine months ago, and we've built $750,000 in uh, media space alone in just that period of time. That's just great. So it's uh, growing very rapidly. It's uh, very, very exciting. And you use your own voice whenever possible. Whenever possible. Uh, uh, <laughs> brings out the old, uh, of course, you, uh, the residuals are great too, right? It's very helpful. Ah, uh, yes. Excuse me just a moment, Steve, and uh, we'll have messages from our sponsors, and then we'll be back to... Uh, more conversation with Steve and Malin Moore. Key West Fragrance and Cosmetic Factory on 13th Avenue South in Old Naples. Mimi welcomes you there, and we have everything you'll need to get a tan and save a tan. And I think this is very important for all, uh, all of you who go uh, Oh, out around the water. It's a lip balm, and you can get it in the little jar, or you can get it in the stick type, and men as well as women like this. Now, we have just about everything you'll need here to get a really good tan, and then after you get the tan, we want you to save your tan with this 80% uh, aloe extra rich formula, save a tan. And it, uh, well, it makes you feel good. It keeps your skin nice and soft and velvety feeling, and you it will not, uh, it keeps your skin from getting all uh, thickened and uh, coarse looking. It is really, really great and it's been tested. It is perfection. Here we have the Papa Texture. This is 5% Papa, 20% aloe, and uh, Papa, of course, developed in World War II uh, by the Navy for uh, the sailors who served out in the South Pacific, and uh, Papa really does uh, help protect the skin. It keeps out the uh, keeps out the harmful rays, the burning rays, while allowing the tanning rays to penetrate. So just don't think just because you're using Pava that you won't get tan. You will. You just won't burn. But should you burn, now it does happen, then we have this for you. 
And uh, this is one of their really, really fine products that I think everyone should have at home. It's great for insect bites, all sorts of things, and has a nice little dispensing bottle. You just pick it up and give it a little squirt, but it's for insect bites and to really take, take the uh, hurt out of uh, uh, a really uh, painful suntan, perhaps on your nose. We have a special type of absolute sunscreen here, too, from Key West Fragrance and Cosmetic Factory. And the fishermen, scuba people, scuba divers like to use this. And uh, this is an absolute sunscreen with 5% PABA. Key West Fragrance and Cosmetic Factory. They'll help you get a tan and keep a tan. These people make a terrific television set. They tell you the quality goes in before the name goes on. And to back that up, they give you a one-year limited parts warranty, two years on the picture tube. Now, Curtis Mathis offers a pretty good set, too. But with Curtis Mathis, every electronic part carries a four-year limited warranty. Now, that should tell you something. Curtis Mathis, the most expensive television set in America, and darn well worth it. Available at House of High Fidelity, 599 Fifth Avenue South. And they have so many of those pretty Curtis Mathis sets and beautiful cabinets. Used to be that they came only in the dark fruit wood cabinets, and uh, Bill Garner himself would uh, paint them for you to make them antique uh, uh, white or any color. But now Curtis Mathis, too, uh, they're produced in the factory in the uh, lighter colors for our tropical living here. And not only do they have Curtis Mathis, but they have Sony. And do they ever have Sony? Many people have Sony to put up on the uh, bookshelves or the, uh, the modular furniture because Sony is so nice nice and skinny. It fits there beautifully. But if you like a really, really big picture, may I tell you about this. And uh, this is uh, their, well, it's what's better than a box seat. I'll tell you what it is. I'm going to open it all the way up and show it to you. Uh, here it is now in uh, this brochure in the regular room size. You can see uh, how it looks. And these used to be very big and very uh, uh, well, it's hard to show you. These were always uh, sort of clunky. Well, now they've really scaled them down. So here is the final beautiful picture. This is Sony's KP5000. And it's the wonderful projected uh, television. And it's better than a seat on the 50-yard line. And uh, you can uh, take it out to the porch area and uh, have the whole gang in to see it. And you can see it on display there at the House of High Fidelity. It's the best you've seen, and you'll see it at the House of High Fidelity. Uh, Steve, uh, what's uh, coming up in the fall for uh, Tandem Productions, Lear Tandem Productions? Anything exciting? Oh, you told me about the Baxters. What's that story about? The Baxters is very interesting, and this is the first time in the history of uh, television that entertainment for prime time has been uh, coupled with public affairs. Mm -hmm. And the setup is that the first 15 minutes of what is a situation comedy that rapidly becomes a situation drama, dealing with uh, very sensitive topics, such as uh, teenage alcoholism, rape and marriage. This is Very, the Baxters? This is the Baxters. Well, how did you get the name the Baxters? I thought it would be a family sitcom. There is one. The, the family is the Baxter family. Oh. And it's the same family every week. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. and Mrs. Baxter and their two daughters. They're going to go through brain tumors and all those things? Very. Amnesia? <laughs> nothing quite as glib as amnesia. Uh -huh. It's considerably more serious than that. Oh, gosh. The uh, plot builds to a climax 15 minutes into the show, and the show ends without resolving the problem. Oh, I've got and each station that uh -huh. runs the show has a studio audience, and they talk about how they would like to see the show resolved in terms of uh, how would you like your children to see this on mm -hmm. television? Mm -hmm. How would it be acceptable for them? Uh, in, in terms of drama, what would, be, what would be correct? How do you feel? Do you think it was a real situation? It's something new, isn't it? It's very new. It's, it's sold now in 40% of the country. And uh, it was sold on the basis of a pilot that Rue McClanahan did. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I think it's going to be very Is successful. Any well-known actors? Uh, we're final casting right now. It goes mm -hmm. into production late in July. Mm -hmm. Now, when you did uh, All in the Family, you have, uh, you touched on subjects in All in the Family that uh, uh, were very, very uh, new and prior to this uh, particular time. Uh, they had been uh, verboten, right? Yes. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, All in the Family was first sold to ABC TV. Mm -hmm. And they got the first script from Lear, and they said, no, no, we can't run this without editing. Is that Mr. Silverman? I don't know who was running uh, ABC then. That was 1971. Who would that have been? It could have been. 
or um, I think he was there. In well, who finally took a chance on it? CBS picked it up, and they said they would give it a try, running a disclaimer at the beginning mm -hmm. and oh. at the end, saying that we're not totally responsible for this. He is super bigot, isn't he? Yes. Uh -huh. And the first year, it won uh, three Emmys. And at the Academy Awards in 1972, I'm sorry, the uh, Emmy Awards in 1972, Johnny Carson was hosting. And he opened the show by saying, welcome to an evening with Norman Lear. Uh -huh. And everyone thought that was quite a chuckle. And that year, uh, All in the Family won seven Emmys. My very favorite show on All in the Family was the one with Sammy Davis, Jr. That was a wonderful episode. That was a very, very fine show. Uh, you uh, get to meet all of the people that we just hear and know about. Uh, Johnny Carson, would I like him if I met him? I've never met Johnny Carson. Uh, he just uh, comes across to me as a little arrogant, and yet when I see him with the uh, old people, you know, sometimes he gets uh, old, some of the really old actresses on. There's one that's uh, close to 90 now. He is so gentle and so compassionate, so maybe I would like him. Did you like Alan King? I detested Alan King. <laughs> I know say it everywhere. I know you traveled with him. The man with the cigar is uh -huh. very, uh -huh. very yeah. mean. Uh huh. Very mean. Uh huh. Okay. Yes. Who else uh, do you work with that uh, you find uh, enchanting? Or uh, they won't see this. Really rotten. Really rotten. Very few really rottens. Actually. How about Mary Tyler Moore? Is she really nice? She is a delight. Mm -hmm. a and delight. her husband? Yes. Uh -huh. Grant Tanker is marvelous. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, another one that I like. Um, Oh, um, won so many awards. Uh, the girl uh, with hair like mine looks like me. I look like her. Bonnie Franklin. Oh, but no, no, no. I'm trying <laughs> to. Uh, yes. Oh, now who is she? Just a minute, and I'll do that commercial. But I can't think of what. Um, oh, did big, she, big. Did she ever say crystalline beds of cracked oh, she ice? Does <laughs> oh. She does this. She does this. Carol Burnett, yes. Oh, Carol uh, Burnett. Yes. Is she nice? Wonderful lady. Oh, good. Terrific okay, now we'll have a message from our sponsor. Superb dining with a spectacular view. This is Rooftop Restaurant, high above the world, where your elegant dining is complemented by breathtaking scenic vistas. Enjoy a superb cocktail on the terrace. Choose from the varied menu, which includes unusual seafood delights, or for those who doubt their sea legs, prime rib and New York steak. For the ultimate in a delightful dining experience, Rooftop Restaurant, Hickory Boulevard, Bonita Beach. And if you go to Rooftop Restaurant, for goodness sakes, ask Terry McCulley about the big one that didn't get away, the big beautiful sailfish that she caught in Mexico recently. You'll be able to see that big beautiful sailfish because it's going to uh, have a permanent display home there at Rooftop Restaurant. We're showing you their summer menu there, and it's the uh, pretty little deep gold-colored menu with the family picture, four generations of restaurant owners at uh, McCulley's Rooftop Restaurant. Terry McCulley and her son Joe are there to welcome you. And this is the luncheon menu. Now, during the winter months, they, uh, they always have a luncheon buffet. But during the summer months, and things are a little quiet, a little easier, it's a delicious uh, luncheon, not buffet. And they always have a chef's daily selection, which is priced at less than $3 and always served with uh, potato and vegetable. All of the entrees at their luncheon menu, and that's the one I'm showing you here, are served with the soup of the day, steak, fries, or French fried potatoes, and coleslaw. And of course, they accept a visa and master charge and luncheon is served from 11:30 in the morning until 2:30 in the afternoon you can always have one of their big beautiful refreshments there the margaritas are the specialty of the house and during the summer months they are so cooling so nice 14 ounces of beverage in a 16 ounce big beautiful goblet and uh, rooftop restaurant is closed during the summer months all day on monday so this gives the staff a chance to uh, kind of rest up and they welcome you there other, every other day of the week at Rooftop Restaurant, Casa Bonita, Bonita Beach, Florida. Rhodes Furniture Fashions are located north on the trail at Seagate Drive. They're open all year long. They're there to welcome you six days a week from 9 in the morning until 5, and there's lots of easy parking there. And I uh, suppose for the most part, many of us, of us are staying home. We planned uh, perhaps to do a little traveling, drive here, here or there. 
and instead uh, many folks are dis uh, going to stay home. They've decided to stay home and maybe uh, take the money we're going to use for traveling and do a little something for the house. Well, certainly you can start at Rhodes Furniture Fashions. If it's outdoor furniture for around the pool area, you'll find a nice selection. Uh, perhaps it's uh, new curtains and uh, new uh, carpeting, new accessories for the home. Certainly, they'll be happy to assist you there, and they have a staff of interior decorators, and you may request their services always at Rhodes. You're entitled with your purchase, whether it be a sale item or not, to free delivery and setup uh, service, and uh, that is very nice, too. And they're very happy to uh, honor your credit cards, and certainly we hope that you do have a Rhodes uh, credit account. And at Rhodes, they welcome you there, and they're never too busy to say hello if you want to go in and just browse around as a big giant uh, showroom you're welcome to but as soon as you see something you want you'd like to know the price or if it comes in other colorings usually the uh, the ticket is there the price tag is right there but if you'd like to ask any questions about it there's always a courteous member of the staff there at Rhodes to assist you you know that in their bedding department they have the best bedding they have Malone climatized bedding it's made in Florida for our Florida humid climate they also have the Simmons beauty rest in the various degrees of firmness. I know that you will enjoy your visit to Rhodes Furniture Fashions. For contemporary furniture, period furniture, it's just great. It's Rhodes Furniture Fashions. Malin said to ask you about Elizabeth Taylor. Yes, when I first started at Tandem, my first project was to package Sanford and Son for uh, syndication, for reruns. And the first order of duty there is to watch every single episode of Sanford and Son, which I accomplished in about two and a half weeks. How many was that? About 245 oh. episodes. <laughs> and one morning, it was a Saturday morning, I was at the studio red-eyed and very weak, drinking coffee and, and watching uh, Red Fox. And I heard a giggle at the door. I was at my desk taking notes. And I looked up, and it was Elizabeth Taylor. She was coming in to do return engagement. Mm -hmm. and out of makeup and she was looking through and she said would it bother you terribly if I came in and, and watched a few minutes of that that's my favorite show what is it that bothered me terribly <laughs> <laughs> I kneeled and <laughs> she came in we spent a couple of hours Did she, she looked pretty lovely uh -huh. yes and so folksy charming mm -hmm. she is really friendly huh very friendly really nice that's great that's great we have only a couple of minutes here now any other little pearls of wisdom about uh, big old uh, what is it Tinseltown is that what we call it Tinseltown yeah that's that's you know the thingamabob um, only that it's so nice to get away from Tinseltown really? for a while well he was I, talking I, about how much work he does I mean he he does just work incredible hours do you hours. really he oh, works more than I do Lynn. Uh -huh. You'd work long hours. Oh, well, uh -huh. nothing compared to what he does. And he called on the phone last week before he came down here. And this was a very last-minute trip and said he was just exhausted and had to get away and wanted to come someplace where he could just be away from all of the California hubbub mm -hmm. and the smog and, and everything. And, and he found it. Do Naples like, to me like is... Naples? I love Naples. Uh -huh. This is the fourth time I've been here. And Naples to me is like a giant... A Valium. It's just <laughs> relaxed. Uh, it's isn't that delightful nice that here. you would say so? Well, we're going to be looking forward to you in the fall, and uh, we'll try to remember the name of Stephen Brockelman, Stephen Lynn Brockelman, in fact, and we'll listen for your beautiful voice, which is not any better than Malin Moore's. Certainly not. Uh, I, we we kind of love our Malin Moore here. Uh, the other day when he was on, uh, people uh, wondered what he looked like, and somebody said it looked like he had taken his mustache picked it off the table and <laughs> put it on like this. So we had you back by a uh, popular request to let people know that that's really you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was probably John Burgess that said that, wasn't uh, it? Probably yeah. so. We have a critical audience here. <laughs> it's been so nice having you, Steve, and I hope you find fun things to do while you're here in Naples. Just eat and relax and enjoy yourself, huh? It's the best of the best. Uh -huh. Oh, that's good. And uh, we don't have any problem with gas, so you can... Uh, uh, Put a few gallons in and tool around and look at our beautiful beaches. In my car. In my <laughs> yes, car. Yes, in car. Yeah, which uh, gets so many He made miles. me post bond to drive it out. I <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yes. Uh, no one does. He's known me too long. I'm surprised he doesn't put a cover on it out here, that big, beautiful black car. I uh, hope you have uh, a lot of success in your new fall uh, ventures out there. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and meet you. And we'll be watching for the uh, Lear Tandem Productions. And thank you so much. Thank you, Mayland, for being here. Thank, thank you, you Steve Brockelman. We'll see you at another time on the Lynn Bailey Show.
You've been watching the Lynn Bailey Show, Naples Gallabout Town, with things to do, places to go, and people to meet. The Lynn Bailey Show is seen each Tuesday night at 7.35 and each Thursday at 1.30. Another exclusive color studio presentation of Cablevision 9. Lynn Bailey Show furnishings by Rhodes Furniture Fashions. Be sure to be watching for the next edition of the Lynn Bailey Show. Let me tell you, those feature films on home box office are especially important to me. I've got five kids, and it costs a fortune to take those five kids out to the movies. I watch home box office all the time. I love the movies they show, and I love the sporting events. I like their specials. I like everything about home box office. My wife and I use Home Box Office Guide. She goes through it the first month and marks everything down on the calendar that she wants to see. And uh, we kind of have a hassle once in a while over that because she gets first pick and then I take what's left over. Home Box Office is television. Home Box Office, a solid month of specials, sports, and top feature films, unedited and uninterrupted, all for less than the cost of an evening or two at the movies. Find out about HBO and you. Call 262-1000. This is Cablevision, Channel 9. The Naples Report is next. Good evening, everyone. Two million dollars in additional pay and benefits over the next two years is the total amount of increases requested by the Collier County teachers in their continuing negotiations with the school board. Collier County School Board Attorney Jim Seiske was given a $5,000 raise after two years of service as school board attorney, boosting his salary to $33,000.